This video clip is part of EDUC 5101G, a course entitled Learning with Technology, as offered in the online Master of Education in Education and Digital Technologies program at the University of Ontario Institute of Technology in Oshawa, Ontario, Canada. This video clip is designed to outline the context or the situation in Module 2 within which problems pertaining to the informational order can be identified and or clarified. The material displayed in this video clip is presented by Dr. Roland Van Osvein, an associate professor in the University of Ontario Institute of Technology's Faculty of Education. The HCHI model, or Human Computer Human Interaction Model, Desjardins 2001-2005, is being used in this course as it outlines the major technological competencies that will be explored throughout the course. The informational order addresses uh, issues pertaining to the use and generation of declarative knowledge. Note that themes in this order are inclusive of those explored in the last module, as the learner user continues to interact with ICT, so issues of user competency regarding interfaces, organizational structures, operating systems, etc. are added to the complexities of finding and managing information in its various guises. The next slide provides a humorous representation of the situation in which we find ourselves when we suffer from information overload syndrome, and I will leave that to you to explore on your own. It seems log uh, that a logical place to start when addressing the concept of information would be to try to define the concept. Information theory, as developed by Claude Shannon in 1948, is oriented around the quantification of information as he was concerned with increasing the amount of information that could be transmitted over a dirty radio channel or some other transmission mode. The notion of information being viewed as a measure of the amount of reduction of uncertainty seems to be of some value. If we use an analogy, perhaps this will make a little bit more sense. If we take a normal penny, we can think about the probabilities of flipping the coin and observing the outcome. When the coin lands and the head side, for instance, is observed to be face up, we have gained one piece or one bit of information since the uncertainty of the situation has been decreased. If we take a weighted penny that always lands with the tails face up, for instance, we haven't gained any information since the uncertainty of the situation, the coin always lands with the same face up, has not been affected. This situation, then, can be expressed as a math mathematical expression, as shown on the slide. I of x is equal to the log base 2 of m, where x is the amount of uh, the information source, where m is the number of outcomes, and i sub x, or i of x, is the amount of information. The result is measured in bits when a logarithm base of 2 is used. There are only two outcomes that are possible, in other words, heads or tails, on or off, zero or one. Observing the outcome of flipping a fair coin garners one bit of information, while observing the outcome of flipping a weighted coin garners zero bits of information. Outcomes, then, that are more common give less information as less uncertainty is inherent in the situation. And outcomes that are more uncommon give more information, and the results can be viewed as being surprising or comprising of surprisal information. Moving from the definition of information, um, according to Desjardins 2005, informational objects can be viewed as retrievable representations of declarative knowledge that are stored as text, images, multimedia, or any other form that's accessible locally or through the internet. In the context of the internet then, what has happened to information over the past few decades? The following is excerpted from the historyofinformation.com website and the URL will be given on the website itself or on the slides. In the 1980s then, um, 1980 itself, Usenet was established. Usenet was considered to be a poor man's ARPANET which was a uh, precursor to the internet itself. In 1981 the IBM PC was introduced in 1984, first music CDs were pressed in the U.S. In 1986, there were 5,000 plus hosts on ARPANET slash internet. In 1989, there were 100,000 hosts on the internet. Moving then to the 1990s, in 1990, ARPANET was discontinued and was merged into the internet. The first web page was written. In 1991, we have the first release of, of a web browser 
that was referred to as the World Wide Web. And we have the first web server in North America going live at the Stanford Linear Accelerator Center, SLAC. In 1993, traffic on the Internet expanded, get this, at 341,000% growth rate. The first library of digital images uh, was found on the Internet, and in that year, the first web search engine, Aliweb, was developed. In 1994, we can find 2,500 web servers and 10,000 web sites. In 1995, an online searchable archive of over just uh, over, over 100,000 academic journals called JSTOR was established. In 1996, we have 100,000 plus websites. In 1997, we have DVDs introduced and 1 million websites available in that year, just one year after, um, after 100,000 websites were available. In 1998, VoIP or Voice over Internet Protocol becomes available. MP3s were introduced. Google is founded, and IP version six is proposed and established due to an anticipated shortage of IP version four addresses. Moving then to the 2000s, um, in 2000 itself, over five million items were found could be found in the National Digital Library Program, and Wikipedia begins. In 2001, satellite radio broadcasting begins. In 2003, print, film, magnetic, optical storage media produced about five exabytes of new information. 2004, OCLC, the Online Computer Library Center, served more than 50,000 libraries, and it contained more than 56 million records. Facebook also started that year. In 2005, we had 40 billion web pages. It's estimated that 300 years will be needed to index all of the world's information, estimated at 5 million terabytes, and only 170 terabytes had been indexed to date in 2005. 2006 college-level lectures via podcasts were offered on iTunes U. In 2007, the University Digital Library scanned over 1 million books. In 2008, 5 billion songs were sold by the iTunes Store. 181 million active websites could be found on the Internet. In 2009, Seattle Post Intelligencer became an Internet-only news source. The World Digital Library was launched. In 2009 as well, we have 1.7 billion Internet users. And e-books began to sell, outsell physical books. In 2010, we find that Facebook has 400 million users. Twitter announced that it would donate to the Library of Congress its archive of 10 billion tweets that had been accumulated since 2006. Data traffic on mobile networks was doubling each year. In 2011, 4.3 billion IP version 4 addresses had been allocated, and we were forced to move to version 6. Apple's iBookstore sold 100 million books in its first year. 200 million tweets per day were noted. That's 100% increase since 2009. And we have more than 10 billion Android apps that had been downloaded in that year. 100 million words were translated per week by Google Translate. And more than 1 trillion videos were played back on YouTube in the year 2011. In August of 2010, Wired magazine had the audacity to declare that the web is dead, long live the internet. And you'll get the uh, URL um, in the presentation page itself. What did the authors mean by this? The first sentence of the article gives us some indications. Two decades after its birth, the World Wide Web is in decline, as simpler, simpler sleeker services think apps are less about the searching and more about the getting. Another way to look at this it would be to suggest that we are doing less surfing and we are spending more time on specific sites. We can explore some of the differences between the World Wide Web and the Internet by looking at the way information is dealt with in each of these paradigms. It's proposed that the World Wide Web can be characterized with respect to information by finding or searching, selecting, and managing slash creating. While the Internet can be characterized with respect to information by aggregating, filtering, and connecting. The following slides describe each of these processes. World Wide Web Processes 1. 
finding information. A competency description can be viewed as becoming skilled in the operation of different systems, browsers, and search engines used to access information on the web, and having to learn specific documentary research techniques, including the use of certain thesaurus and bibliographical databases, the use of special Boolean search operators, or the creation of semantic networks, and that's taken from Desjardins 2005. World Wide Web processes two selecting information. A competency description can be viewed as choosing appropriate information and the determination of the information's reliability and validity, Desjardins 2005. World Wide Web processes three managing slash creating information. A competency description can be viewed as selecting information that leads to the production of new texts and documents using an array of knowledge and abilities deployed in order to plan, write, revise, and publish documents of all kinds, again taken from Desjardins 2005. Internet process is one, uh, aggregating information. A competency description can be viewed as the use of a website or computer software application that aggregates or accumulates a specific type of information from multiple online sources. That's taken from Wikipedia 2010. Internet processes two, filtering information. A competency description can be viewed as use of a system that removes redundant or unwanted information from an information stream using semi-automated or computerized methods prior to presentation to a human user. And again, that's taken from Wikipedia 2010. Information processes three, connecting information. A competency description can be viewed as connecting ideas to each other, connecting ideas to people. Castell and Stell, 2010. And the URL for the website is given on the slide. Finally, other issues that underlie all of the information that is available on the Internet are those of validation and verification. In other words, how can information obtained from the World Wide Web or the Internet be validated, verified, and evaluated? These issues are of prime importance and must be addressed before the information can be used and transformed into knowledge. That brings us to the end of this particular video clip.